Thirst is deadlier than hunger. Deprived of food, you may last a few weeks. Deprived of liquid refreshment, you'd be lucky to last more than a few days. Only breathing matters more. I want to share with you all today some of the realizations and revelations I've had, serving many drinks uh, to my friends, colleagues, customers, and friends over the years. From behind the bar, I've had a front row view and observing people's relationship with what they drink and its resulting effects. The elderly gents having a pint of beer before they head home late for dinner. The mothers and daughters sharing a cup of tea and catching up. We've got the coffee connoisseurs concocting plans for the next business venture. And we've got the ladies sipping rosé in a summer's day. We also have the Jaeger bombers, need we say more. Then there's the 14-year-old walking to school, drinking two or three shots of caffeine, ingesting 32 heaped teaspoonfuls of sugar, 1,000 milligrams of taurine, and a pinch of blood thickener for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and sometimes just before bed. What we drink has shaped the history of the world. And it's my firm opinion it will shape our future too. Drinking is universal to us all and clearly critical to living life itself. As a drinks designer of sorts, it's my role to break down ingredients to better understand their flavor, texture, color, chemistry, pH, balance and aroma, ultimately pulling these components together into one resulting experience. It's what we call a cocktail. For many years, I tried to entice uh, people of these popular soda brands to, um, you know, in exchange for my own drinks and mixes and creations. I would say to people, um, why do you need a mass-produced cola when you've got a real drinks mixer here in front of you? Then one day, behind the bar, something occurred to me. I realized that I must serve water as often as I can to help my guest bodies cope with the levels of intoxication they were embarking upon. Taming these levels of intoxication and dehydration became my priority and number one priority as a professional bartender. Sometimes taking them high, but always bringing them back. I built up trust with my guests, serving them food at the right time, caffeine, you know, sugar, yes, white wine, red wine, white spirits, dark spirits, champagne, cocktails, tequila, but always water. I was, it was a bit of a turning point for me, you know? I was amazed by how dehydrated my guests were and actually how, how much water they would drink. This level of rehydration, however, only happened if I served it to everyone, individually. This was key, because there was no escaping it, you know? And I would make my water serves look epic. So people had no chance uh, or wanted to drink them. It made it fashionable. Water slowed them down, it had a profound impact, and it helped their bodies cope with the barrage of sodium, acid, sugar, alcohol, and caffeine that were streaming through their bodies and liver. It made my guests feel good, and serving it made me feel good as well. A relationship with drinks hasn't been always bad. In fact, for thousands of years, it shaped who we stand to this very day. the water of life. We wouldn't be here without it. Beer. Beer was one of the first currencies, and some say beer alone built the pyramids. It was also in its day the only safe thing to drink, and the safe source of liquid to drink for many thousands of people. A cup of tea financed the rise of the British Empire to great and astonishing heights. Distillation 
herald a new age of trade and continental communications between different countries. Coffee gave us a 17th century styled internet of communications, not dissimilar to the ones we use today, and Facebook and Twitter, probably all happening hopefully right now. And then there's the soda industry. We'll get to that in a little bit. More recently, around four or five years ago, I had the pleasure of working with some charities and organizations that help use the hospitality industry as a vehicle for developing life skills and employability skills. You know, working with different groups, children with mental health problems, prison inmates, gang members, disenfranchised youth to aspiring young mothers. What I realized that all these different groups had something in common, and it was their drinks diet, all exceptionally poor. I found it really quite disturbing what people were turning up to my, my training modules with at 9.30 a.m. in the morning. You know, not just one. On average, about 60% of the class would be, have some form of energy drink or, um, or, or, or cola or, or, or soda. These observations led me to further develop and evolve a training session I've been running called the First Impression Sessions. The First Impression Sessions is a module that incorporates, sorry, First Impression Sessions incorporates micro-modules that train the brain and body function separately and then together in context. And it covers five key areas that we introduced. Better understanding of a drink's history and its impact on the health and, and the world. The power of positive body language and first impressions. The dangers associated and health risks with sugar and caffeine addiction and overconsumption. The importance of drinks nutrition and good body fuel. Aroma recognition, drinks craft and creative mixology. I realized that what these people drink had a profound effect on their uh, uh, you know, attention span, their mood. And after further study, realized the impact on their mental and physical health too. The sugar and caffeine highs and cranky lows, are I'm sure something many parents and teachers can empathize with too. I see quite a lot of heads nodding. These sodas in question strip our body of vital minerals, key to our body's function and internal chemistry systems. Not only that, they disrupt hormones that tell us our brain to stop consuming. Think about that. Astonishing, isn't it? Is it any wonder we're in this epidemic of health uh, problems across Scotland and wider Western world? When I say we, I mean you, your friends, your family, your sons, your daughters, your spouses too. Our big challenge now is to turn this unconscious addiction to sugar into a conscious one, whilst developing and, and implementing new drinking habits and life skill modules that start from preschool, nursery, and beyond. We've got a pretty big job in our hands. Soda companies are sponsoring major international sporting events. Energy drink companies use sportsmen as their champions of health, performance, and function. Remarkable. It's very clear these drinks represent no nutritional value and are not suitable for any true athlete of any kind. They're of medicinal strength. Even small quantities can lead to dependency, that leads to a habit, that can lead to type 2 diabetes, that can lead to mental health problems, heart problems, heart disease and even to obesity and cancer. Is it time to ask ourselves some bigger questions as a country? The information age is something we're thick of today. And through platforms like TED, people are starting to wake up to a corporate mindset that has one thing motivating it. Your repeat custom, and your money. Certainly not our health. 
Until these companies grow a conscience, we must change our perception of them entirely. Sugar dependency is a trap that many can fall into. Today, on average, the average four to 10 year old will consume 5,500 cubes of sugar every year. Remarkably, one can represents 50% above the daily allowance now for an adult. That's unbelievable. How many of you guys know someone who maybe drink three or four of these cans in the first half of an afternoon? Maybe some people that can't get through the day without it. I focus my shift to education and prevention to combat the hypocrisy we see in plain sight. It will take every single one of us to share this information that we know to be truly linked to some of the biggest mental and physical health problems we see en masse across Scotland today. These sportsmen and energy drinks, sorry, these sportsmen are copied and influenced millions of people across the country, often young. Energy drinks can be as low as 29 pence with the closest bottle of water nearly twice the price. It's a bit of a cliche, but what we put in is what we'll get out as a nation. As it stands, this is what we get out. One in four people will contract two, type 2 diabetes in their lifetime in Scotland. One in four will be diagnosed with a mental health disorder. Two-thirds two -thirds of us are currently overweight, and over 25% of us are now obese. There is a little good news. <laughs> it's all pretty doom and gloom, isn't it? Soda, soda sales in the US are at a 30-year low, um, which is a small step. Um, heart disease is on the decline in Scotland, which is good to see. Um, and there is a sugar tax. We're all a part of that debate. However, I ask you all this. Will putting a can of soda up by six pence change the drinking habits of the country or the, the, the drinks industry that supplies it? All my experience tells me very likely no. As consumers, we must insist on safe alternatives and a safer balance of ingredients in these drinks. Aspartame, another common alternative to sugar, and still used today in many popular sodas, still has very questionable ingredients and effects on our body. So where do we go from here? Nature, as always, usually has the answer. Stevia is a plant extract that has been used for hundreds of years in Japan to great effect. And remarkably incredible, 300 times sweeter than sugar. And you know, in our, our regular table sugar. Also adds zero calories to our diet. In South America, it's been used for 1,500 years safely. And the WHO, the World Health Organization, now deems it safe en masse for consumption. That includes pregnant women and children. So, what now? We must paint a new vision to legislate and revolutionize and reform our relationship with drinks in Scotland, whilst informing the young and old about the dangers overconsumption can uh, lead to. Today, I want to share with you all here at TEDx Stirling a dream, a dream and vision where people of all ages are empowered to govern their own body chemistry, hydration levels, and drink nutrition. A vision where, as a culture, we proactively serve water with any alcoholic beverage of medium to high spiritus content. A vision where Energy drinks can only be purchased by young adults aged 18 or above. A vision where we hold the drinks industry accountable for the wrath of disease that we now see en masse across the country. 
a vision where we use what we drink as the number one solution to solving the health problems we are witnessing today in Scotland. A vision that will help us all redefine our relationship with drinks. Thank you very much indeed.